What's up, YouTube? This is 82 and 0. Welcome back. So, a good friend of mine and I, we were talking, and he requested me to do a video on home court advantage. Like, how important it is, the factors. So, going back to the history of the NBA. Back in, all the way back to 1950, for example, the home team actually won 76% uh, of their games in the playoffs. That's a lot, but it declined somewhat after that, you know, and it stagnated around, uh, like, 60, 65%, and in most of the 1980s and 70s, it was around 65%. But there's been a decline as of lately. So starting around 2014-15 season, the, the league... Average win percentage for a home court advantage is 53.7%. And it's been kind of hovering around there. But it dipped in 2020, obviously, because of the bubble, because there's no real home court advantage. So why is home court advantage so important? Well, it depends on the team, because certain cities you play in, there's going to be crazy fans who are going to back their team to the end. And they're going to try to get in the opposing player's head. And a team that comes to mind is the Boston Celtics. You know, they've always had pretty crazy fans. Uh, you know, they used to throw stuff straight up at the opposing players. So that's a big factor. You know, you've even had instances where allegedly Michael Jordan, when he was in Utah, someone, I don't want to say poisoned his pizza, but, you know, prepared it in a way that would get Jordan food poisoned. Well, I guess you could say poisoned it. But these are all factors on why home court advantage is a big factor. And finals format has periodically changed because, you know, I remember, I'm sure a lot of people my age remember, like around 2013, I think it was, they switched to this 2-3-2 format. And, you know, I've always been somebody that said we need to have a 1-1-1, one, 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 you know, like, one, you know, game one, you're... East, game two, your west, whatever. Uh, but currently, it stands at 2-2-1-1-1, two, two, one, 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 which, you know, isn't too bad. Which means the team with the best record has the opening two games at home. Then the other team has the next two at theirs. And then it goes back and forth, 1-1-1. One, one, one. Uh, I don't consider this format bad. I just think that a 1-1-1-1 one, 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 one would be a better format. So, why is home court advantage not as important today? And, you know, I've been kind of trying to put my finger on this, and I kind of have two theories. Obviously, majority of the time... In the finals, especially, you're not going to see a road team win a closeout. Uh, a few of them that come to mind are like the 98 Bulls. They won that game six in Utah. You know, trying to think of some, uh, you know, the 2017 or 2016 Cavs closing it out in Golden State. So it does happen. But the reason I think it's been on decline is. Two reasons. One, obviously, back in 2020 when they played in the bubble, 
they didn't no team had a home court advantage and there were no crowds. That's why I think you saw like the 2020 Denver Nuggets. They were able to win all those road games against the Los Angeles Clippers and the Jazz. They were able to come back from 2-3-1 deficits. So obviously that contributed to why the winning percentage of a home court advantage went down. But I think there's one other factor. I think just the lifestyle of players has gotten significantly better. Um, And I'd even say that, because, you know, I mentioned in the beginning of the video how in 1950, the home court advantage team won 74% of their games, and then it went down in the 60%, like 65, 63, throughout most of the 1960s. You know, in the 60s, they started really traveling by team planes. You know, in the early, early days, they would travel by a team bus, you know, and unfortunately, for a lot of black players in the late 50s, they weren't able to get hotel rooms. They'd have to sleep on the bus or whatever. So that's why home court advantage was so important back then. And as in the 60s, as the 60s goes on, you can see players having, or teams having team planes, and they'd start getting an allowance for food from the from the teams. But today, I think is just like so much different in terms of how the teams travel. Uh, For example, I was reading when I was doing my research on this, uh, they get meal money players, right? And they receive, I think it's $133 per day on the road. Uh, That's like the equivalent of around $1,500 per month. So you got that factor. They're making millions and millions of more money, right? They're dealing with the best hotels, luxury hotels. And, you know, back in the day, they'd have to go out to a club, to a bar to pick up ch- to pick up women, right? And nowadays with social media and the way they can order stuff, like they can order food to their hotel, they can meet a girl on Tinder, they can get a girl on Instagram to come over to their hotel. You know, these players, they don't have to leave their luxury hotels like they used to. You know, like you see those pictures and videos of Dennis Rodman back in the 90s partying it up. You know, these players, they're living very lavish lifestyles. So I think this is partially what contributes to why home court advantage has slightly been going down is – They're not taking as much of a wear on their body to travel somewhere, you know. They're still living in luxury, so they're still a lot more comfortable. That's just my theory I have, but let me know what your thoughts are down below. How important do you think home court advantage is? Let me know down below, and thanks again for watching.